The Sennheiser AVX MKE2 is a new wireless mic system designed to let you easily connect a mic into a camera. It's license free and self-configuring and looks to be very easy to set up and use. And of course it promises the Sennheiser sound quality. Since I now have one of these, I ran some tests and I've come up with some results that might be interesting to anyone looking into one of these. I'm coming at this as a low budget video shooter, not a serious sound person. So let me tell you how this system looks from that point of view. I'm a relatively recent convert to wireless mics since the whole business of licensing and frequencies was just a bit off-putting. But then the Rode Wireless Go came along and offered easy setup on a license-free band. So I got one and filmed the whole of my field recording course with it. And it's been great, but I was curious to see how a more pro-style system would compare. So after seeing some good reviews of the Sennheiser AVX MKE2, I thought I'd give it a try. Here I'm going to share my thoughts on this system and some sound samples. So if you're interested, maybe this can help you to decide if it's for you. The AVX MKE2 kit comes with three main parts. The SK AVX body pack transmitter, the EKP AVX receiver and the MKE2 lav microphone. The system works on the 1.9 GHz decked band. This is a license-free band centered around 1.9 GHz, but unfortunately not a truly international band. Be careful which kit you get because Sennheiser have two kits with very similar names. The AVX ME2 kit has the same transmitter and receiver, but comes with the ME2 microphone, which is a cheaper electric microphone. The MKE2 microphone is a true condenser and more expensive. I haven't got the ME2, so I don't know how much difference that makes. Sennheiser also have a related kit which uses the same receiver, but with a handheld dynamic mic with a built-in transmitter for street interviews and that kind of thing. The AVX MKE2 kit comes with a bunch of accessories. A USB charger, a mic clip, two sets of frequency modifying filters for the mic, as well as a mesh windshield, and a fur dead mouse, a hot shoe and strap mounting clip for the receiver, an XLR to 3.5mm adapter, and this very nice pouch to keep it all in. The pouch makes no sense to me though, it seems like all the bits would just rattle around loose in there. Something more compartmentalised would make sense. Here's an odd thing though. I decided to buy the MZ2 accessory kit for the MKE2 to get a foam windshield and some spares. It comes with one black and one beige mesh windshield, two mic clips, black and beige, two vampire clips, dark grey and beige, one foam windshield designed to go over the mesh, and a carrying case, cost £25. I didn't even think about the case, but it turned out to be this quite nice large hard case. Completely absurd for the spares kit, but just the right size for the whole AVX wireless kit. The foam insert that comes with it is unfathomable, but it wasn't hard to make my own, and now the whole system has a nice carrying case. So to begin with, here are my quick impressions of the AVX MKE2 system, and how it compares with the Rode system. The transmitter and receiver are pretty well built and feel completely solid in the hand. The transmitter has a pretty stiff belt clip, which supports it well. The transmitter is a lot bigger and heavier than the Rode transmitter, but that's not saying much. The Rode system is really compact and light, even the transmitter. For me, in fact, the extra heft of the Sennheiser transmitter isn't a problem. It's not remotely a burden, and it feels solid on your belt, and it stays there reliably. I've had problems, actually quite a bit, with the Rode transmitter coming loose and dangling on its wire. The Sennheiser system has enough solidity and heft that it just feels like it's going to stay put. And the Sennheiser system has a locking mic plug, which is a good thing. The receiver plugs directly into XLR and it swivels, so you should be able to find a way to orient it on your camera. And there's a supplied 3.5mm adapter cable, so you've got that option as well. And you can just let it dangle from the cable, or use the supplied clip to connect it to a hot shoe, or clip it onto a strap somewhere. With the Rode system, you just turn it on and go. 
With the AVX, it's the same deal. You just switch it on and it just works. There's a pair button on each unit that you can use to pair the transmitter with a different receiver, but by default, it just works. I've never even pressed the pair button except by accident. And like the road system, the AVX automatically searches for a quiet channel to use. Gain is set to one of four levels by pressing the AF out button on the receiver and it's shown on an LED bar graph there. You'll have to set the fine level on your camera if you want to fine tune it, but this gets you in the right ballpark. Both units have battery gauges, but only for themselves. That is, the receiver can't tell you the transmitter's battery status, which is something that the road does. But the Sennheiser's transmitter is so long lived that this really isn't much of an issue. There's a mute switch on the transmitter, which is nice. And when it's in use, the status LEDs on both units go yellow. However, the receiver's LED is very close to green, so it can be a bit hard to tell. One advantage of the road system is that the transmitter has a built-in mic, so you don't even need to rig up a lav. The transmitter is so light you can just clip it to a t-shirt, and it doesn't really sound too bad. This could be great for a quick and easy piece to camera. With the Sennheiser, you have to set up a lav. I have to ding Sennheiser for a couple of design issues. The transmitter's display is nice, but it's recessed so deeply inside the unit, like a quarter inch, that you can really only read it straight on. Normally you want the display as close to the front glass as possible, like ideally bonded to it. And the charging ports are micro USB. I mean, come on Sennheiser, is this the 19th century? USB connectors have been a chaotic disaster and USB-C is the solution. Yes, they give you a cable in the box, but that's not the point. I don't want more cables. I want fewer cables. Still, at least the charging ports are on the battery. So if you have a spare battery, you could be charging it while using the other one. The battery on the receiver is pretty small, and that turns out to be the weakest part of the kit. But I still got over five hours of runtime from it, which is about the same as the road system. And of course, you can extend that indefinitely by using USB power, but watch out for electrical interference from your USB battery pack. Still, I got 17 hours of runtime from a small 25 watt hour battery pack with only a quarter of the charge used. The receiver does not run off phantom power. It does use phantom power to turn itself on and off automatically, which is nice. The transmitter ran for ages on its built-in battery. In a simple test with the transmitter and receiver on the same table, I got over 17 hours on one battery charge. Since the transmitter adapts its transmit power based on how hard it is to get a signal through, I ran another test with the units in different rooms, shooting through two internal walls. Even here it got 15 and a half hours. I can't imagine running that down. This is way longer than I got from the road transmitter, which was a bit under six hours. So about frequencies. The AVX system runs on the 1.9 GHz DECT band, which was designed for cordless phone systems. And the DECT band is license free, which is great. The problem is that while the DECT concept is an international standard, the actual frequencies used vary by region. Europe, parts of Asia, Australia and New Zealand are all on 1880 to 1900 MHz, but the US and Canada are on 1920 to 1930 MHz, which doesn't even overlap. Other bands are used in certain other territories like Korea, Taiwan, Japan and South America. Sadly, Sennheiser sell different versions of the kit for each region. The Dash 3 version is for Europe, Dash 4 for North America and so on. It's a shame they didn't give you some kind of menu option to set your region, because as it stands, if I was moving between the UK and US, I'd need two different kits. The road system really scores here, as it's on the 2.4 GHz band, which is mostly international, so one kit works everywhere. But the problem is that the 2.4 GHz band is ludicrously crowded. It's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth jammed in there, as well as a host of other wireless gizmos. If you're working in a tech-heavy environment, this could be a real killer. And this is where the Sennheiser system scores, because at least the DECT band doesn't have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth competing for it. Of course, the main thing that matters is what does it sound like? So let's do some tests. Again, I'm going to be comparing to the Rode Wireless Go because that's what I have. In these tests, I'm going to compare the two mics side by side and recording simultaneously so you can compare exactly what they sound like from the same take.
the Sennheiser is going to be recording into the XLR input on my Canon C70 and the Rode Wireless Go is going into the 3.5mm input. So let's do a basic sound comparison with both mics just naked. This is the Sennheiser MKE2 recording into the AVX wireless system and this is the Rode Lav recording into the Rode Wireless Go. Life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man could invent. We would not dare to conceive the things which are really mere commonplaces of existence. Life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man could invent. We would not dare to conceive the things which are really mere commonplaces of existence. Now we'll try both mics with their fur windshields. Again, the Sennheiser MKE2 is recording into the AVX wireless system and the Rode Lav is recording into the Rode Wireless Go. Life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man could invent. We would not dare to conceive the things which are really mere commonplaces of existence. Life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man could invent. We would not dare to conceive the things which are really mere commonplaces of existence. I'm interested to see what the modifiers supplied with the Sennheiser mic actually do, so let's compare them. Unfortunately, these modifiers can't be used with the mesh or furrow windshields, so these tests will be unwindshielded. First, for comparison, here's the Bayer MKE2 mic once again, recording into the AVX wireless system. Life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man could invent. We would not dare to conceive the things which are really mere commonplaces of existence. Now the same test, but with the short modifier attached to the microphone. Life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man could invent. We would not dare to conceive the things which are really mere commonplaces of existence. And now once again, but with the long modifier attached to the mic. Life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man could invent. We would not dare to conceive the things which are really mere commonplaces of existence. And finally, let's give the built-in mic on the Rode transmitter a try, just to see how well that stands up. So this is the bare Rode transmitter with its fur windshield over the built-in mic. Life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man could invent. We would not dare to conceive the things which are really mere commonplaces of existence. So let's try some distance tests just to see how they fare. Once again, I'm going to have the Sennheiser MKE2 mic running into the AVX wireless system and the Rode Lav running through the Rode Wireless Go. I've got both of the transmitters in front of my body and I'm going to do all the tests both facing towards and away from the camera just to see what difference it makes to have them firing through my body. This is at 10 metres from the camera. Life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man could invent. We would not dare to conceive the things which are really mere commonplaces of existence. Life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man could invent. We would not dare to conceive the things which are really mere commonplaces of existence. I did this test twice in two different locations and got broadly similar results. In the first test, both systems worked well, out to 40 metres facing the camera, which is as far as I tested, but with my back to the camera, so transmitting through my body, the Sennheiser was still fine, but the road was pretty broken up. And now 40 metres from the camera, with both transmitters facing away. And now 40 metres from the camera, both transmitters facing away. In the second test, both systems actually worked out to 60 metres facing the camera. But at 60 metres with my back to the camera, both systems showed problems, although the road was worse. 60 metres, back to the camera. Life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man could... So I want to test how well the two systems handle Wi-Fi interference. To test that, I'm going to put the Wi-Fi dongle on my camera. My camera uses an external Wi-Fi dongle. And I'll use the remote control app to stream video to my phone. The two mic receivers will be placed about equal distances from the dongle. I want to be clear of what I'm testing here. The road system runs on the Wi-Fi band, so even though it might be technically on a different channel, I would expect it to have a problem with Wi-Fi interference in the same band, whereas the Sennheiser system is on a completely different band.
So this test is slanted against the road from the outset, but I still think it's an interesting test because the 2.4 gigahertz band is so jammed full of stuff. I think it's worth seeing what kind of benefit you would get by running on the Sennheiser system, which is on a different band. Once again, I did this test twice, and again, the results were generally similar. In the first test, the road actually did really badly. At three meters, with my back to the camera, it was already broken up. Now once again, three meters from the camera, but this time with the transmitters firing through my body. And from there, it pretty much just got worse until at about 40 meters, either facing or back to the camera, the road was just getting nothing. The Sennheiser was okay, all the way up to 40 meters, no problem. In the second test, the road did a little better. Right in front of the camera, it was okay, but at 10 meters with my back to the camera, again, it was broken up. And now 10 meters back to camera. Life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man could invent. We would not dare to conceive the things which are really mere commonplaces of existence. 10 meters back to camera. Life is infinitely Anything which we would not dare to conceive the things which are really mere commonplaces of existence. 20 and 40 meters facing the camera were all right, but with back to camera again the road was badly broken up, and at 60 meters I couldn't get anything from the road either way round. The Sennheiser, on the other hand, was fine all the way up to 60 meters. Life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man could invent. We would not dare to conceive the things which are really mere commonplaces of existence. Overall, the Sennheiser AVX MKE2 feels like a solid pro-style piece of kit. It's not a true high-end system designed for large productions, but if you need to rig a mic to a camera, this works great. For a low-budget video shooter like me, this is a fairly serious investment, but it looks and feels the part. The Sennheiser AVX ME2 system, which has the same radio components but a cheaper electric mic, might also be an option worth looking at for some people. The Rode Wireless Go system really delivers amazing value for a small amount of cash, but Sennheiser seems to have the edge in performance, particularly radio performance, and particularly in the presence of Wi-Fi interference. For people who need a really reliable system or who are working in tech-heavy environments, that could be really important. In any case, I hope this video has given you an idea of what the AVX system is about. And thanks for watching.